Welcome back to the shooting channel. Today we're going to do a film about etiquette when you're out and about at a playground. We've been asked a lot on this channel and by some of our advertisers and sponsors to do a film about how to walk around with a gun, whether it's a semi-auto or an over and under. So we thought we would do a film about what to do. So every, all you new people, viewers, that are watching this and thinking, oh, it's a bit daunting going into a shit playground with a gun, have a look at this and it should tell you what you should do and the do's and don'ts when you walk around a playground and what you do. A lot of etiquette when you're walking onto a, onto a playground, a lot of it is common sense. The first few things you need to be thinking about is when you're starting shooting. Earphones range from £30 to £300. Earphones always think about looking after your hearing. It is a loud bang that's going to go off, so look after your hearing. So it, hearing protection, baseball cap. If you're walking around a clayground, there is bits of clays around. You do have driven clays because a lot of playgrounds, a lot of people like to practice for, for driven shooting. So you will get bits of clay on your head and fall on. It do, they do hurt. The biggest dangerous thing is bits of clay coming down, shatters of clay coming down and hitting you on your head or in the body or something like that. So buy yourself a, a, a cap and it's, you put that on and it's safety, all right? If you had one with a peak, it also protects your face as well. Safety glasses. Biggest thing you wanna be thinking about, safety glasses. You do not have to buy Castellini one, Pillars ones. Something like Evolution, 20 pounds. But you need a set of safety glasses. The last thing you wanna do, light your hearing, is get a bit of clay in your eye because you'll never, ever, ever see again. So safety glasses. And I personally think a skeet vest is something. To go out, you need somewhere to put your cartridges, you need something to look professional um, when you're walking around a playground. Going out just in a, in a jumper or in a fleece, to me, doesn't set the, the right example. If you've got the right gear, you set the right example for new people coming into the sport. You can pick a skeet vest up for anything more than 45, 35, 45 pounds upwards. So a skeet vest, I would say is on my list. I know a lot of you will not agree with that, but think about getting yourself a skeet vest. Gun slip. You always carry the gun like that. You never carry the gun like that because that end is solid. It, will, it could fall out on there, you've done yourself damage straight away onto the concrete floor. So you always carry the gun that way up. A lot of people, ski or trap shooters, tend to carry a gun out of the slip. Now, the reason why is most trap shooters, because the trap and skeet side of the sport is a lot more professional and you're going to the Olympics, a lot of the trap shooters, they tend to carry their guns around in their cases because in their cases, they've got loads of different accessories that they tend to use for their trap. Whereas with sporting, you don't need all that. It's not as professional. So you don't need all that sort of gear. Um, a lot of people, they buy the gun, they leave the gun, they leave the gun case at home for probably until they're gonna sell it. So for trap shooting, people do tend to carry it in the case and it is, seem to be okay when you're shooting trap or skeet to walk around with the gun open and over your arm, not necessarily in a slip. When you're walking around a sporting ground, really, I don't particularly mind seeing it out the slip, but some grounds do like to have them in the slip. When you take the gun out, the slip opens to there, the gun comes out, you push the top lever across, the gun is open, when it goes back in, goes back in there and it's safe. What a lot of people do is that. Now I know that's empty, but you viewers don't know that's empty. So the gun is always 
as it comes out, the gun is always open as it comes out. When you carry it, that is about the safest way to carry it. A lot of trap shooters and skeet shooters, they too tend to carry it around like that. But obviously remember you've got two ends. So I personally don't mind walking around a sporting ground like this with it out in the open. But make sure when you go to that ground, make sure you can ask. And if the ground doesn't mind, then you can go to the sporting ground and you can carry it like this. You don't have to put it in the slip. But generally, if you have a slip, if they ask you to put it in a slip, put it in the slip but be common courtesy when you go to the ground ask if you don't know if you see everyone carrying it in a slip put it in a slip that is about the best way of carrying it if you're walking around you can carry it like that obviously not like that you damage the end of the gun the gun is on the toe like that not like that obvious reasons the gun is open there when you put it into the rack the gun is open into the sky close the gun up there and it's always stock bound barrel up trigger guard facing out you never do that so the gun as it comes out you break the gun it comes out so generally a broken gun which is when it's open like that and that is what we say an open gun is a broken gun an open gun is a safe gun at a cpsa or competition it will be you'll be in a cage, only you in that cage. At a shooting school, you will generally just have a rail. The first thing that happens is the gun is over that rail. You never ever put the cartridges in here, close it up and do that. You always close the gun there and you close the gun into your line of view. If you close it into the line of view and you pull the trigger, it is in a safe place. You never close the gun there and you never pull the trigger like that. You always, close the gun into your line of view there. When you're walking around, you can carry it like that. That is a definite no-no. You carry it over your arm or like that. The other thing I would also do, make sure you always bring your shotgun certificate with you when you go shooting. Because then if you do get stopped on your way home or something like that, you've got your shotgun certificate to prove that you are a shotgun certificate holder. Don't forget, you have to show your shotgun certificate to buy cartridges anyway, to take them away from the ground. If you do, when you leave shooting and you do want to go to the pub or something like that, take the forend off, put the forend in your handbag or in your pocket or take the forend into the pub. That gun is knackered or it's not worth nicking without that forend. So if you want to leave the gun in the car, just take the forend off like that. And then I'm just going to show you a little bit extra about a semi-auto. Semi-autos generally, when you take them out the slip, you always have to have a flag to show that it is open. You carry a semi-auto like that if you carry it out the slip. Generally, I would put the semi-auto in a slip once you go in it. But you always put, and all it does, that comes out and it's a semi-auto flag and that goes in like that. And you take that off, you put that in your other pocket, and then you go and shoot. When you finish the stand, you put the semi-auto flag back in, close that off, take it down, and either put it in the slip or put it back in the rack. And that's the general etiquette and safety that you need to think about when you're walking around or when you're going out shooting. The only other thing I would always put into that, you don't actually need insurance when you go out and shoot. Because most of the proper shooting schools, maybe not some of the gun clubs, most of the shooting schools have got proper insurance. But I would join, the, join one of the organisations. Now you've got CPSA and you've got BASC which I would say is probably the two major organisations. I'm going to be completely honest, if you want one of those organisations to join, they're both about the same price. The CPSA generally is only interested in clay, in, in competitive shooting. If you're not interested in competitive shooting, there's not a lot of point in joining them. If you're interested in competitive shooting, then you can join them. The BASC, is a lot better organisation to join for all-round 
shooting person. I know they're more interested in game shooting, but they have various different, you get free entry to the game fair, you get a magazine, you get a magazine with CPSA, but you get a magazine. They also support you if you have problems with your shotgun certificates. So that's the two I would probably, I'm a competitive shooter, I'm a member of the CPSA, but I, if I was doing it again, or if I wasn't a competitive shooter and I didn't want to shoot red shoot, I would shoot BASC. So out of the two, BASC is probably better and you get more out of it for the average Joe Blog shooter. But I would really, really benefit in joining one of those organisations. That's the basic etiquette for walking around a clay ground. An honest opinion, if you go to a trap ground, yes, you will take your box with you because that's what you would generally use. If you walk around a, a sporting ground, personally, if you're in doubt, always keep it in a slip once you come off the stand. I hope you've enjoyed this programme. For more information on anything we've done in this programme, please comment below. Please comment below on any other films you would like us to make. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. That really, really helps us to get our audience and get our message out there to you new shooters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.